You just passed your answer exam. Now what? All right, first, congratulations. Now they always say congratulations. You have chosen the best career opportunity on planet Earth. I absolutely love this industry. I got started in the industry when I was 19 years old as an intern, calling out of a phone book for a veteran agent before I knew you weren't really supposed to be doing that. Transition I, I, later, I'm 20 years old. I'm in college, playing basketball, taking 21 credit hours a semester, practices, games, tournaments, all that kind of stuff. And I committed to make it 100 grand, okay? Because I went to a recruiting meeting and there was 10 people in the room. And you'll probably relate to this story, by the way. I was 10 people in the room and the manager said, okay, 10 of you stand up. We stand up, he said, all right, now take a look around. Okay, we start sizing each other up, looking around. I'm like, okay, all right, I got you, uh, maybe you, you know. And he's like, okay, now nine of you sit down, you stay standing. He didn't pick me to stay standing and it irritated me and you'll find out why in a second. He said, okay, now nine of you sit down. He said, maybe one of you will make it. And I'm like, dang dude, that's a real positive way to start this whole deal. But inside, internally, and if you're like me, if you got some drive and, and, you, and you're a very competitive individual and you want to win and you want to do well and succeed, right? I said, this dude doesn't know me very well. If there's going to be a one, I'm going to be the one, okay? And in that moment, I committed to making $100,000 my first year in the insurance business and being the one that was successful. And I, I think there was actually two out of that class, by the way, um, that only two, but I wrote down, I will earn $100,000 my first year in the insurance business. I dated it, I signed it, and I put it up on the wall of my cubicle. And then every day I went out to make that a reality, okay? I went out cold calling, cold door knocking, and made $117,361.13 in my first eight months at 20 years old. If I can do it, you can too. I guarantee it. I promise you that if, if I was able to succeed, you can as well. I'm going to share with you some of the stuff that you need to be thinking about doing now that you have your license. Congrats. Not okay, you've passed it. Now make sure you go get your license from the state, okay, Department of Insurance. What I did, I'm going to walk you through some of the things that I did. I'm also going to walk you through some of the things you need to think about doing. After I got my, my after I got my license, when you get your license, you got to find a, you got to find somewhere to plug into. You need a niche really. You need to niche down. Don't try to sell everything. That, that's a mistake. By the way, that's a big mistake that a lot of agents make. They want to sell everything when in reality, they need to be selling this, 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 or this. I chose life insurance. I'm not saying that's what you should choose, by the way, but I chose life insurance as my niche. Okay, so that's good. That's a niche, right? We, we got that. Then, I, all right, life insurance. I need I need somewhere to, uh, to sell, right? Carriers, contracts, right? Captive or independent, whatever. Then once you have contracts and carriers and you have the ability to sell a product, an insurance product for an insurance company and get paid commission, that's how you make money. Then you need to figure out what is your marketing approach going to be? How are you going to consistently get in front of people? So I did the math and I want to challenge you right now to think about doing the math right now with me together. I, I, I put out a piece of paper. I figured up what I thought, I asked some veteran agents, I figured up what my, I thought my average sell would be, and I learned that I need to sit down with at least 10 people every single week. If I would consistently sit and ask 10 people to buy, and I think I even increased my numbers just a little bit on purpose to have a little bit of a buffer, as long as I sat down and asked 10 people to buy every single week, then I was successful, and I did really well. The weeks that I didn't hit 10, I sucked. I didn't have a big week. Unfortunately, most agents, they only sit with zero, one, two, three, or four people per week. And it's very difficult to be successful if you're not getting that many swings of the bat, if you're not getting momentum. If you, like, if you have one appointment here, and then two appointments the next day, and then one the next day, right, you're never really getting in a rhythm, and, you're having, and, and maybe they stand you up or you have a no, and your whole day is super negative. I would jam pack appointments into about three days per week. Okay, so that I would have some wins, some small wins each day. And I would get in a rhythm and momentum and I'd make sales that I shouldn't make because I had those little wins. Okay, I didn't spread it out over the course of an entire week. So I would have, I would have call nights. I would call on Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays, even Tuesdays when I needed it. But I would typically run appointments on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then if I needed extra, I would go door knock on Thursday and Friday. And if I really needed extra, I would door knock on a Saturday. That was my week. That was my rhythm, right? That, that was that, but, but you've got to figure out how are you going to get in front of those people? That math we just did, how are you going to, like for me, I was trying to set 15 
set with 10 to cell 5. That was my triple S system, if you will. Set, sit, sell. Set 15, sit with 10, sell 5. And as long as I did that, I knew I was going to be successful and have a phenomenal freaking week. And the thing is, 100 grand may sound like a lot of money to you, but if you divide it by 50 weeks, you take two weeks off, guess what? It's not as much as you think. It's only about $400 per sales day. Now, when you break it down like that, it makes it seem possible, right? So what happens is I don't focus on months, quarters, and years. I focus on weeks. And as long as I can string enough good weeks together, bam, 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 I can develop a phenomenal year just by stringing together a lot of good weeks. Okay, so my marketing perspective was I didn't know anything about leads. I didn't know anything about buying stuff. I did three things. I worked my warm market, so I have something called a rolling 100. Right now, I, 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 in the next couple days, I would absolutely write down 100 people that you know that you can go help, that you know or that know you. If you can't help your family, you will never freaking succeed. Don't even think about it otherwise, okay? Either you love them or you don't, okay? Go help them. But when you write down that 100 people, I add a rolling feature to it that, that my buddy Dallas actually put, put me onto years ago. Anytime I sell someone or they don't buy, I take their name off of the list. But every time you take a name off, you have to automatically add one on. We were like, Cody, dude, I don't know if I have enough people to like add a name, you know? You do, I promise. I sold insurance to a couple team members lately. I recruited a guy at Office Depot. I recruited a, a, the, my, my waitress at the restaurant Char in Springfield, right? So I'm actively looking for people to add to my list. As long as you want to find them, church, gym, restaurants, right, coworkers, anywhere else, I promise you, if you want to find them, you'll find them, okay? So, so you had, that, that was the first thing, my rolling 100. If I took a name off, I added one. And I always had 100 people that I could reach out to to go see. And you should be able to see at least a handful of those every week pretty easily, okay? Rolling 100, warm market. The second thing I did was I cold called. So I had call nights. I would bring over college kids. And every Monday night from 5.30 to 8.30, we would make calls. I'd give them a script, a cold call list, a chair, a phone, a cubicle, okay, in a script. And I would help them make calls. And we would cold call a list. And I would give everybody lists and names and we'd make calls. And then, and then at the end of the night, I would, we would book 8, 12. We'd have three to five people. I would also make calls with them so I could lead by example. And we'd have, uh, I'd give away cash. For, for, and trivia and, 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 and some money and, and, and gift cards. And we, I would walk out of there with eight, 12, 16, 20, sometimes tw as many as 24 appointments in like three hours. So that was the second thing was cold calling. And if I needed, needed to do extra of my own cold calling on a Sunday or a Saturday, I absolutely did. Okay, absolutely did. A lot of Saturdays and Sundays. And then the third thing I did, because it's all about activity in this business, right? Warm market, cold calling, and, and, and I'm not saying that this is what I would do now, by the way, because I, I would probably use some money and, and do some marketing, but this is what I did back then. The third thing I, I did was door knock. I would go cold door knock on these senior housing facilities. They had no clue I was coming, they didn't know who I was, and I had to win them over. That forced me to be a phenomenal salesperson, to go from, hi, my name's Cody, to thank you, to, thank you for your business, welcome to the family. To go from that to that, in about an hour when they have no clue who you are and they didn't know you were coming, that takes some skill. And I got really good. I got to where one Friday I left uh, college and I got out to Willow Springs, Missouri at like 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And I door knocked for like 9, 10 hours, literally until after 9 o'clock. And I sold six life insurance policies in one day in that one 175 door knocks or whatever it was, simply from cold door knocking. So I got really good at something that I hated, that was uncomfortable, that was a fear for me, but I put myself out of my comfort zone and I did it. So those are the different ways, right? So you need, you gotta pass your test, right? Congratulations. You gotta have some, you gotta have a product niche. You gotta have some carriers and contracts to sell so that you can earn some commission. You gotta, you gotta run your math, do your numbers, set your goal. Number five, you gotta figure out what your, what your, what, what, what your, what your prospecting focus is, right? Those were mine, okay? And the number six, you gotta do whatever the freak it takes to show up and win every single day, okay? This is the best career on planet Earth. Congratulations, you are in it. This is it. Unfortunately, 92% of agents fail, and that's a big specific reason why they fail, because they don't sit with enough people, they don't have a goal, they don't know what they're doing, and they don't prospect enough, they don't put forth enough activity in. You put enough activity in, I promise you'll get it out, okay? Also, there are more millionaires 
in a financial services and insurance industry than any other industry in the world. You're in the right vehicle. You have the right career. You have a license to sell, to go make money now. Let's go. Hey, you love this and you're like, dude, what are the mistakes that I don't want to make and how do I avoid them, all right? I'm going to go over the top six mistakes agents make and how you can avoid making them right here. Click on that video. See you over there. Hey, six mistakes. Six mistakes that a lot of agents make. I wonder if you're making them and how to avoid them. So I'm going to start out by letting you...